Janmashtami is around the corner. So we'll start with uh, uh, a nice um, Bilva Mangal Thakur's prayer. Rajay Prasiddham. Uh, in glorification of the Supreme Lord, Krishna. Braje Prasidham Navanita Choram Braje Prasidham Navanita Choram Go Panganam Chadukola Choram Anika Jan Marjita Papa Choram Charakraganyam Purusham Namami Shri Radhikaya Hridayasya Choram Shri Radhikaya Choram Navapoda Shyamalakanti Choram Padashrita Chasamastha Choram Charakraganyam Purusham Namami Akinchani Kritya Padashritam Ya Akinchani Kritya Padashritam Ya Karoti Bhikshum Patige Hainam Enapya Ho Bhishana Chara Itri Drishta Shrutova Najakatra Yepi Yadi Yanama Piharat Yashisham Yadi Yanama Piharat Yashisham Giri Prasaran Api Paparashim Aschaya Ropo Nanu Chora Itri Drishta Shrutova Namaya Kadapi Dhanam Chamanacha Tati Hindriani Dhanam Chamanacha Tati Hindriani Pranam Shahitva Mama Saiva Meva Palayasi Kutra Dhritu Dhyachara Tvam Bhakti Dham Nasi Maya Nirudha Chinasi Ghoru Yama Pasha Bandham Bhinasi Bhimam Bhava Pasha Bandham Chinatsi Saivasya Samastha Bandham Naivatmano Bhakta Kritam Tu Bandham Manmanasi Tamasarashi Ghori Manmanasi Tamasarashi Ghori Paragrihe Dukha Mahi Nibadha Labha Swahe Jaura Hari Chiraya Swacharya Dosho Chitame Vadanta Paragrihe Dukha Sada Hidaye Madi Madhati Pasha Dridha Bandhana Nishchalasan Tvam Krishna He Pralaya Koti Shatantarepi Sarvasva Chora Hidayam Nahimo Chayam Sarvasva Chora Hidayan Nahimo 
This is a beautiful prayer which is offered by uh, Srila Bilba Mangal Thakur. It's called Chaurashtakam. Uh, and the meanings are also beautiful. We'll meditate a little about uh, the meaning also. I offer my respectful obeisances to that foremost of thieves who is famous in Raja as the butter thief and he who steals the gopis clothes and for those who take shelter of him steals the sins which have accrued over many lifetimes. I offer my respectful obeisances to the foremost of thieves who steals Srimati Radharani's heart who steals the dark luster of a fresh rain cloud and who steals all the sins and sufferings of those who take shelter of his feet. So we are seeing that how he appears to be stealing uh, the butter, stealing Radhika's heart, but there, there is an inner meaning also that he is stealing uh, the sins and uh, sufferings of those who are taking shelter of him. So beautiful. He turns his surrendered devotees into paupers and wandering homeless beggars. Alas, such a fearsome thief has never been seen or heard of in all the three worlds. Mere utterance of his name purges one of a mountain of sins. Such an astonishingly wonderful thief I have never seen or heard of anywhere. O thief, having stolen my wealth, my honor, my senses, my life and my everything, where can you run to? I have caught you with the ropes of my devotion. You cut the terrible news of Yamaraj. You sever the dreadful news of material existence. And you slash everyone's material bondage. But you are unable to cut the knot fastened by your own loving devotees. O stealer of my everything, O thief, today I have imprisoned you in the miserable prison house of my heart, which is very fearful due to the terrible darkness of my ignorance. And there for a very long time you will remain, receiving appropriate punishment for your crimes of thievery. O Krishna, thief of my everything, the noose of my devotion remaining forever tight, you will continue to reside in the prison house of my heart because I will not release you for millions of eons. Such a beautiful prayer, Hare Krishna. So, welcome to all the devotees uh, to this wonderful session on Rutrasura, appearance of Rutrasura uh, today. We will start with the prayers. These prayers are seeking permission from Parampara to discuss spiritual matters. Oh, oh Magyana Timirandhasya Gyana Jana Shalakaya Chakshuran Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Shri Chaitanya Mano Bhishtam Stapitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kadamahim Dadati Swapadantikam Vandeham Shri Guru Shri Uta Padakamalam Shri Guru Vaishnavamscha Shri Rupam Sagrajatam Sagana Ragunathan Vitam Tam Sajivam Sadvaitam Sabadhutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Pada Sagana Lalita Shri Vishakhan Vitamscha He Krishna Karuna Sindhu Dina Bandhu Jagatpate, Gopisha Gopika Kanta, Radha Kanta Namostute, Tapta Kanchana Gorangi, Radhe Vrinda Vaneshwari, Rishabhano Sute Devi, Pranamami Hari Pri, Vancha Kalpatarupyascha, Kripa Sindhu Pyevacha, Patitana Pavani Pyo Vaishnavi Pyo Namo Namaha Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhara Shri Vasadi Gaurav Bhatta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare Hare 
hari rama hari rama 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 hari hari om namo bhagavate vasudevaya om namo bhagavate vasudevaya om namo bhagavate vasudevaya narayanam namaskrityam naram chaiva narottamam devin saraswati vyasam tato jayam udhirayit nashta prayesh bhaktesu nityam bhagavat sevaya bhagavati uttama shloke bhaktir bhavati naishtiki krishnaya vasudevaya devaki nandanaya cha nandagopakumaraya govindaya namo namaha nama pankajanabhaya nama pankajanini nama pankajanitraya namaste pankajangre namo mahavadanyaya krishna prema pradayate krishnaya krishna chaitanya namne gauratushe namaha namo brahmanya devaya go brahmana hitaya cha jagadhitaya krishnaya Govindaya namo namaha namo Vishnu padaya Krishna prishthaya bhutale Srimate bhakti vedanta Swami niti namine Namaste Saraswati Devi Gauravani pracharine Nirvishesha shunyavadi Pashatya deshatarine Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Atvaita Gadadhara, Shri Vasadi Gaurabhukta Vrinda. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Mukam Paroti Vachalam, Pangum Langhayate Kirim, Yatkripata Maham Vande, Shri Purum Dinatarinam, Paramananda Madhavam, Shri Chaitanya Mishwaram, Uma Pavitra Pavitova, Sarva Vastan Katopiva, Yasmarit Pundari Kaksham, Sabahya Pyantaram Shuchihi, Shri Vishnu, Shri Vishnu, Shri Vishnu. Um, uh, yeah. Dear devotees, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada, all glories to Gurudev, all glories, glories to the Guru Parampara who has given us the opportunities to speak a few words on Srimad Bhagavatam every Saturday, Sunday and Ekadashi mornings. Um, uh, please forgive me if my if um, out of ignorance I make any mistakes. Um, I'm trying to repeat whatever I have heard and I have uh, read uh, from, uh, from the Srimad Bhagavatam. So today's chapter um, is um, uh, is basically chapter nine of Canto six, which is the appearance of Ritrasura. And uh, here um, I am given the section of um, uh, the verse thirty eight to fifty five. So basically, this chapter we will just uh, take a summary of uh, this chapter. What happened so far? Right, so in this chapter, uh, what has happened is that Indra, who is the king of heaven, uh, he kills Vishwarupa. Uh, and why he kills is a little described in the initial verses of the chapter. Uh, basically, uh, Vishwarupa is the son of uh, Tvashta, and he's a priest who has taken the position after, um, uh, after uh, Indra actually insults uh, Brihaspati and sends him away. So, Vishwarupa uh, performs all the sacrifices and yagnyas uh, for uh, Indra. But what he does is that um, Vishwarupa has a lineage. His father is Tvashta, who is also a great Brahmana. But his mother comes from the lineage of um, the demons, uh, from Jiti's lineage. And uh, what he does is that secretly he is also offering uh, oblations to the demons. While he is offering oblations to uh, to the uh, uh, to the devatas and Vishwarupa's um, uh, so uh, Indra comes to know of it 
and then uh, and basically vishwarupa has uh, um, three uh, three heads and he'll be performing the oblations uh, with the three heads so what um, indra does is that he basically uh, cuts off chops the head of all the heads all the three heads of uh, vishwarupa so vishwarupa's father who's twashta gets to know of that he performs a yagya to avenge his uh, son's death and he wants to kill indra but while performing the yagya he chants a mantra uh, in a in a wrong way so what happens uh, because of the consequences of killing vishwarupa is that because vishwarupa was a brahmana indra actually regretted killing of uh, him but um, he had the power to neutralize it obviously he is the he is heading all the devatas he had the power to neutralize that sinful reaction but he does not he chooses not to do so he um, realizes that he made a mistake and uh, therefore he accepts um, uh, he he um, kind of realizes that okay i am ready to accept any kind of sinful reaction which comes my way and um, then what he does is that apart from that he he, uh, he takes those sinful reactions and he passes it passes it on to four elements which are the land trees women and water and uh, uh, and in exchange of something that he gives to the land trees women and water right so because land uh, uh, so land when they accept uh, the sinful reactions of indra a part of it turns one fourth of it turns into desert trees uh, which accepts the sinful reactions uh, then they accept uh, uh, so uh, so those trees which make sap are undrinkable so that is the uh, reaction that they accept so there are certain trees only which uh, which uh, drip sap from them and uh, that is undrinkable and women uh, also who accepted a part of the sinful reactions resulted in them being untouchable during menstruation and water uh, being untouchable uh, sorry uh, water accepts the sinful reactions and those water where bubbles and foam are formed they become unusable so for all these, when uh, Indra is giving something to these elements and in return, he is asking for acceptance of the simple reactions. So there is a portion of these elements, land, trees, women and water, which are unusable for any purposes. And that's what happens. Now, Twashta performs this yagya to kill Indra and that was performed incorrectly, like I told before. So, uh, resulting and what happens then uh, in that, um, there is a demon who is born, whose name is Vritrasura, and who becomes Indra's enemy. He has a very terrifying experience, uh, appearance, like how you see here. He has a very terrifying appearance. And um, with all his power, he frightened the entire world including the demigods. And so obviously now demigods are um, afraid of this demon, Ritrasura. And what they do is that usually we have seen in many episodes that whenever demons are afraid, they go and approach uh, Brahma and then together they approach Vishnu and then offer their prayers, uh, asking for protection. So this chapter is basically about that. First, it's about the appearance of Rutrasura and then uh, the demigods offering prayers for seeking protection from uh, uh, the Supreme Lord Vishnu, so that uh, uh, so that they can um, so that uh, Supreme Lord Vishnu can actually incarnate in some form and actually kill uh, Rutrasura. That is the intention. So, so uh, that's what the demigods do. They offer prayers. And worshipping the demigods, uh, yeah. So Supreme Personality of Godhead advised the demigods to approach Dadichi. So how, uh, so what uh, ultimately Vishnu chooses is that he does not, he does not say I will incarnate, but he tells them a solution that how you can kill Vritrasura. 
and uh, and out of his compassion that is out of his compassion so it's not very easy to get lord's appearance so for anything and everything krishna does not um, incarnate so sometimes an easier solution for everything brahmastra is not needed so similarly lord also does not incarnate for everything but he gives a solution through which the same job can be done so he tells them uh, how they can approach the vichi maharshi and how they can actually make a weapon uh, which can help to kill Prithrasura. So this particular chapter is basically covering these aspects. And uh, we will read through the um, translations and purpose uh, to cover the chapter. But that's the basic overview. The section that I have received, which is 38 to 55, covers mostly these prayers and the last little bit of storyline where um, uh, Lord is telling them the solution. That is what this covers. So the uh, prayers have already started and uh, we are midway of the prayers. And so, so we'll see which you have already attended in the past, the prayers. Uh, today we will see the remaining part of the prayers. So whoever wants to volunteer can please uh, speak up and uh, can get a chance to read the translation. I'll take care of the puppet and uh, the explanation. Hare Krishna, anybody wants to do the translation? Mm, Hare Krishna, Mataji, let me try, Mataji. <clears throat> yes, Prabhuji. Translation. With the deliberation one will see that the Supreme Soul, although manifested in uh, different ways, is actually... The basic principle of everything, the total material energy is the cause of material manifestation, but the material energy is caused by him. Therefore, he is the cause of all causes, the manifester of intelligence and the senses. He is perceived as the super soul is everything. Without him, everything would be dead. You as that super soul, the supreme controller are the only one remaining. Hare Krishna Mataji. Hare Krishna Prabhupada. So this particular verse is uh, glorification of the super, pole, uh, super soul aspect of uh, the Supreme Lord. Right? So I'll read the purport. The word, the word Sarva Vastudi Vastu Swarupaha indicates that the Supreme Lord is the active principle of everything as described in Brahma Samhita 5.35. Eko Pyasaura Chaitum Jagadanda Kotim so this is a prayer which is offered by Lord Brahma in Brahma Samhita. And what does it say? I worship the personality of Godhead Govinda who enters the existence of the universe and every atom by one of his plenary portions and thus manifests his infinite energy throughout the material creation. By his one plenary portion as Paramatma, Antaryami, the Lord is all-pervading throughout the unlimited universe. He is the Pratyak or Antaryami of all living entities. The Lord says in Bhagavad Gita 13.3, Kshetra Gyam Chapi Mam Vithi Sarva Kshetreshu Bharata O Siyan of Bharata, you should understand that I am also the knower in all bodies. Because the Lord is the super soul, he is the active principle of every living entity and even the atom. Andantarastha paramanu chayantarastham. He is the actual reality. According to various stages and intelligence of intelligence, one realizes the presence of the Supreme in everything through the manifestations of his energy. The entire world is permeated by the three gunas and one can understand his presence according to one's mode, modes of material nature. So what um, happens is that whenever there is a verse which talks about a certain thing, Prabhupada is, um, uh, elaborates in the purport how that is so true. To, so he gives the supporting verses which can support the translation. So here it is talking about the super soul and therefore Prabhupada is talking about a verse which can support that how super soul is all pervading and all permeating. right? And we have seen in many verses in Bhagavad Gita also about... Uh, that. 
right so when it is about glorification of the super soul so here the perfect what it is talking about that there are various forms in which the supreme soul is basically manifesting so we know that there are three stages of uh, the supreme lord uh, through which he uh, permeates and uh, pervades into everything one is the brahman aspect one is the parmatma aspect and one is the bhagavan aspect now what happens is that with the brahman aspect it is the Brahman, uh, Brahman is basically the effulgence of the Supreme Lord. So effulgence permeates every nook and corner and permeates into every uh, atom and molecule of uh, the material universe, right? So therefore we can understand. So when we, uh, when we try to, when, when there are uh, people who say that Lord is everywhere, uh, Lord is there in these um, mountains, like that so he is there everywhere in every everything that we see they may not um, uh, still accept that uh, lord is a person uh, he also has a personality he also engages in rasas with his uh, devotees so they may not reach uh, to that realization but this realization is also not wrong this is also true so everything that we think about the lord yes he is there in everything and uh, and that he is there in everything through his uh, Brahman effulgence, which is like all pervading. Now, after that, there is the next stage of people who uh, uh, who realize and who accept that Supreme Lord is actually present in every living entity's heart as the super soul. That is also not uh, incorrect. That is also correct because yes, it is the super soul, the Paramatma aspect of the Supreme Lord, which is present in everyone's heart, right? And uh, and uh, so that is uh, uh, so that is what this particular uh, uh, purpose is basically summarizing. So, and uh, the material energy which causes the material world itself originates from the Supreme Lord. So, the Supreme Lord has actually created the material universe. And how did he create? He used his material energy uh, to create the universe. So, therefore, everything that is there in the material universe obviously is a part of that material energy and therefore it is uh, natural that he is present everywhere in the form of his material energy and his energy, his name, his forms, his glories, everything is non-different from the Lord. So it's not like the energy is different from him. So therefore this realization is also correct. Every realization is correct but it's only that the Bhagavan realization where we also accept the Supreme Lord and all the three aspects of him and understand that he is also a person and he loves to engage with his devotees in different rasas. He also has interactions. Uh, he also has loving exchanges. That is when it is a complete realization, which is the Bhagavan realization. That's the only difference. So, but this particular verse is only talking about the energy aspect, how he has created the entire material world, how he is present in every living entity and in every animate or inanimate object of this material world. And that's how the Brahma uh, Samhita has been quoted by Srila Prabhupada. Now we have seen many verses in Bhagavad Gita also, which uh, talk about uh, uh, how Krishna is origin of everything, right? Can anybody tell which verse is that? Where he says, I am the origin of everything? Aham Sarvachotam. Yes, Mataji. Aham sarvasya prabhavo matta sarvam pravartate iti matva bhajante maam buddha bhava samanvitam. So he's saying that I am the source of all spiritual and material worlds. So these, this also supports like what he said in Bhagavad Gita, that is the law. And he's supporting that in this um, episode also where uh, the demigods are offering the prayers to the Supreme Lord. They are also saying the same thing. So... So this narration is basically supporting whatever is already told by the Supreme Lord in Bhagavad Gita. That everything emanates from him. And the wise who perfectly know this only engage in his devotional service. So here the Rabbi gods are also worshipping the Supreme Lord and who are engaging in devotional service. Then we also see that... Um, uh, and he is also said in Bhagavad Gita that everywhere his hands legs, eyes, heads and faces, 
he has ears everywhere in this way the super soul exists pervading everything that also he said in bhagavad gita 13.14 which is sarvata padi padam tat sarvato kshi shiro mukham sarvata shruti maloke sarvam mavritya tishthati he saying that i uh, am pervading everything i exist in everything and all this is already told in Bhagavad Gita. He is also said in Bhagavad Gita that I am the generating seed of all existences. There is no being moving or non-moving moving that can exist without me. That he said in chapter 10. Right? Yachapi sarva bhutanam bijam tad aham arjuna natad asti vinayatsyan maya bhutam chara acharam. So I am there in everything. Chara acharam. Moving and non-moving. So he is saying that in Bhagavad Gita. And the ninth chapter of Bhagavad Gita, basically Krishna tells how he is the essence of everything. He, uh, he talks about Rasoham, Apsukanteya, that how he is present, he is the taste of water. And he talks about so many elements where he is present in different, different forms. And that anything opulent you see in anybody or anything. Like you see a Mount Everest and you are in awe of it. That, that also belongs to Krishna. That is Krishna. You see a great Niagara waterfall and you are all in, in awe uh, of it and that is also the Supreme Lord. So like that, anything. You are um, um, impressed by uh, somebody for their skills and talents uh, for whatever, uh, whether uh, it is their uh, preaching or whether it is their speaking abilities. That is not them. It is Krishna. Because Krishna is present as that opulence in that particular person. So everything that you see, when you start seeing that this is Krishna, this is Krishna, this is Krishna, that is the true realization. That is the real acceptance of Lord's glories. And uh, that is actually taking us away from the concentration that it is the greatness of this particular thing or that particular object or that particular person. And we actually start seeing that as Krishna's glory present in different forms, in different things, right? So it is that wonderful. So this, this verse basically talks about that aspect. We proceed to the next verse, which is text 39. Are you displaying, Mataji? Sorry, Prabhuji? No, sorry. I thought I lost the screen. Can I read it, Mataji, the translation? Yes, Prabhuji. I'm just checking. Yeah, text 39. Please read. Therefore, O killer of Madhu demon, uh, incessant transcendental bliss flows in the minds of those who have even once tasted but a drop of nectar from the ocean of your glories. Such exalted devotees forget the tiny reflection of so-called material happiness produced from the material sense of sight and sound. Free from all desires, such devotees are the real friends of all living entities offering their minds unto you and enjoying transcendental bliss. They are experts in achieving the real goal of life. O oh Lord, you are the soul and dear friend of such devotees who never need return to this material world. How could they give up you? How could they give up engagement in your devotional service? Courage. You can read the puppet also. It's a short one. Although non-devotees, non because of their uh, meager knowledge and speculative habits, cannot understand the real nature of Lord, a devotee who has once tasted the, the nectar from Lord's lotus feet can realize what transcendental pleasure there is in Lord's devotional service. A devotee knows that simply by rendering service to the Lord. He serves everybody. Therefore, devotees are real friends to all living entities. Only a pure devotee can reach the glories of the Lord for the benefit of all conditioned souls. Arrange. Yes, Prabhu. So, the past verse talked about uh, the glories of Supreme Lord as Super Soul. And this verse is basically talking about the, uh, the glories of the Bhakta and the Bhakti. So, um, thanks. sorry, Prabhuji, my laptop is heating up, so I'm just changing my location.
Yeah. So here they are talking about the glories of uh, bhakta and bhakti. And um, first they are talking about the transcendental bliss that you can derive from devotion. So devotees who have experienced even a drop of the nectar from the ocean of the Lord's glories feel incessant transcendental bliss. Uh, the bliss, so how, uh, how Shravanam Like uh, the Shravanam, uh, uh, when we hear about Lord's glories, how it is satisfying to the soul, how we feel the nourishment and the re relishment in that. That is what this is talking about. And that bliss surpasses any any uh, fleeting uh, material happiness, which is derived from the senses, right? So what do we do? What are we doing in the material world? Basically, we are trying to satisfy our senses in different ways. And um, and we have seen uh, with our experience that whatever we try to do in the material world, whatever little we try to do, we get happiness for a short time and it's temporary. And for a long time, there is distress. When we try to enjoy away from Krishna and when we try to engage in sense gratification through the material elements. So... So that is that is uh, the pleasures those pleasures that's why are called very very trivial and uh, and very very temporary right and we don't get uh, uh, and th that's why they're also called fleeting because they don't stay that happiness is not permanent it's not sachidananda it's not eternal but whereas when you hear uh, uh, the glories of the lord you carry it in your heart you feel very uh, very very uh, happy and blissful uh, as long as you are in um, uh, in that uh, in any katha where you are doing the shravanam where where um, uh, glories of lord are being sung or uh, being spoken uh, and whenever you are chanting the names of the lord everything gives relishment right so that is what they are talking about that is the glories of uh, devotion the bhakti and of the lords names and uh, 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 of of the uh, of the glories like when we hear the glories of the lord so that's what uh, it's talking about then we're also talking about the characteristics of exalted devotees so here in this puppet what is uh, highlighted there are three things which are highlighted one is the desirelessness of the devotees second that they are universal friends and third is that their eternal relationship with the Lord. So why devotees are so important in our life? Firstly, because they are they are very uh, they are totally free from material desires, and their entire focus is on is on the Lord only, and uh, preaching about the Lord, chanting about the Lord, and then uh, and how they are universal friends because uh, because they are not looking at any material benefits out of this glorification. So they are not coming and telling us because they will get something in return out of it. They are telling it for out of compassion for us because they are really our genuine friends who want us also to relish the same nectar that they are relishing. Right? That's the reason why these exalted devotees come to us and preach about uh, the Supreme Lord. And uh, we also relish equally. Uh, uh, from them so uh, and that's how they uplift others by uh, by um, uh, kind of infecting us with that um, with that uh, bliss that they are already experiencing and then uh, and why they are able to do all this is because they are intimately connected with the lord who is the who is uh, their their very dear most friend so they don't uh, need to return to this material world because they are already purified and liberated. Unless and until Lord sends them for any particular purpose, like Nitya Bhaktas, Nitya Siddhas, who are there, are sent for a specific purpose. Like Srila Prabhupada has been sent for a specific purpose huh? of teaching uh, uh, and uh, for the preaching mission. So similarly, Lord uh, chooses some people uh, for certain activities. But until until and unless that is the requirement, otherwise these uh, purified souls, these pure devotees never return to the material world. And therefore, devotees who are relishing this taste of uh, devotional service uh, can never abandon bhakti. 
because their um, uh, their real goal of life is in engagement of uh, devotional service only and that is only their goal of life the process is bhakti the end goal is bhakti everything is bhakti so non devotees here so there is also a small comparison which is being done by shila propad about non devotees how are non devotees limited in their uh, thought process so those who do not uh, uh, have devotion or who lack devotion what they do is that they rely on speculative knowledge so they keep uh, speculating no oh, this is god that is not god this could be god and uh, do not really rely on scriptures or uh, on the words of uh, pure devotees because they don't have that faith yet right that's why they lack devotion because they don't they lack faith also and such people will not be able to understand the true nature of lord or any aspect of the lord it is a by default uh, a thing and therefore a pure devotee uh, who has already experienced this transcendent pleasure of serving the lord he understands that there is lot of joy in devotion and uh, and that's what he wants to distribute to all the living entities so that's the reason why he preaches the glories of the lord for the benefit of everyone not but not for his own there is no material benefit for him in that he is not engaged in um, there is no transactional purpose there so now we go to the next points yeah, anybody wants to read hari krishna Translation and purport by Shri Laprapat Ji. Oh, Lord. Some other. Let yes, me read, Mother. Yes, yes, Prabhuji. Translation. O oh Lord, O oh Person of Five, Three Worlds, Father of Three Worlds, O oh Strength of the Three Worlds, in the form of the Mamna Incarnation, O oh Three, O oh Three Eyed Form of uh, Narsimha Dev, O oh Most Beautiful Person within the Three Worlds, Everything and Everyone, including human beings and even the daitya demons and the danvas is what an expansion of your energy o oh, so, oh, supremely powerful one you have always appeared in your form as the various incarnation of uh, in incarnation to punish the demon punish the demons as as soon as they become very powerful you appear as lord bamana deva lord rama and lord krishna you appear sometimes as an animal like lord boar sometimes a mixed incarnation like lord narsimha dev and lord hayagriva and sometimes an aquatic like lord fish and lord tortoise assuming such various form you have always punished the demons and danvas we therefore pray that your lordship appear today as another incarnation if you so desire to kill the great uh, demon batasura hari krishna yeah. so now the demigods are slowly coming to what they want from the lord they want him to incarnate so they, they are glorifying the different uh, um, incarnations of the supreme lord uh, uh, mata ji sorry to disturb you here here uh, here uh, they mentioned in bhagavatam krishna is as the uh, appear from narayan right yes so but it's supposed it right narayan comes from krishna Where, where, Prabhu ji? So here, Mata ji, uh, this uh, your appears yeah. as Lord Bama Deva, Lord Rama, uh, Lord Rama, yeah. and Lord Krishna. Yeah. So basically, they are talking about uh, the different incarnations in the like. Yes, Krishna is the supreme personality of Godhead, but when he incarnates, he again uh, uh, comes as uh, Lord Krishna, uh, as son of Devaki and uh, 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 Vasudev, right? so they are just talking that aspect is here it is not about like here it is not about and uh, and uh, many times we have also heard that even uh, great uh, sages munis demigods also do not understand uh, me as i am so it's not necessary that everybody knows that krishna is the source of all incarnations yes mother 
So that is a probability. But otherwise, here it is only talking about the different avatars he's taken in different uh, life forms. Like uh, even as uh, uh, even even as uh, like as Vaman Dev as a Brahmana, Lord Rama, Lord Krishna. These are these are the human uh, side of it. But he is also taken the uh, form of aquatic, like uh, the Matsya Avatara, Kurma Avatara, the Varaha. No, that's, true. That, that's true, Matan. But here you mm -hmm. appear as. So here yeah. we are talking about uh, Vishnu, right? Yes, he's. They are talking to Vishnu. Mm -hmm. Okay, Mataji. So actually, this type of uh, sometimes it makes confusion for non devotee. We are saying Krishna is all sources. Now, it, like this one, it comes there. So I, I think we should have deep knowledge, or the person who is having deep knowledge, then they can understand. But the materialistic person, they yeah. just quote yeah. one as a Vishnu is greater than Krishna. So that's the reason why Sriman Bhagavatam is also in step by step, right? It eventually takes one to the 10th canto where everything is uh, kind of uh, revealed and even in the second canto it is revealed right how krishna is incarnating uh, in different forms in the first canto itself in um, uh, in uh, in the verse ete cha cham ete cham sakala pum sam krishna stu bhagavan swayam there also it is saying that all are incarnation but krishna is the uh, Bhagavan. So when somebody asks, we can say that, but only such people will ask the question who have not gone from the first canto until this and are suddenly hearing that. And then yes. we can clarify that, yes, Krishna, but he also, again, it is true that he has made an appearance. He does, did not appear in his original form directly as Krishna, like um, in, in the 16-year-old form, he has not come, right? He has appeared as a child and then he is... He, uh, he concludes as a 16-year-old form, but uh, he also appeared. So that is a fact. He's appeared as the son of uh, Devika in, Devaki and Vasudev, whereas actually he is unborn. He is Aja, right? In yes, reality, yes. he is unborn. He is not supposed to be born. But these are only the... Uh, uh, this is the reason why his um, activities are inconceivable. Yes, Mataji. So we can just Mataji. support that, saying that yes, with with the supporting verses, uh, where it says like um, Ishvara, Parama, Krishna, Sachi, Dananda, Vikraha, and we will see that whenever this this kind of a thing comes, Prabhupada also uh, will uh, definitely support in the uh, purport, whatever uh, he is talking about. So here. But basically, in this purport, what Prabhupada does is that he highlights uh, the different types of devotees and how they approach the Lord. A a when they approach the Lord, why they approach the Lord. So basically, it is talking about that. So here, uh, uh, one is that uh, we are, uh, one second, we are in verse 40. Yeah. So whenever you got my point, Prabhuji, whenever anybody asks the question, we will have to give the supporting uh, verses, which says that Krishna is Bhagavan. And uh, literally, you will have to give the SSR who is God when somebody gives that. But for this particular context, contextually, now the demigods are saying that there is no, the demigods are not talking about uh, Lord Krishna is the source of all avatars. We don't even know whether they know it or not. Because Krishna himself says in Bhagavad Gita that not everybody knows it. Even demigods are bewildered. Like that. So we don't know that, that context right now. But however, we just accept it on the face value that they are just talking about the different incarnations, different appearances. Not really incarnations. These are appearances. Like Lord, Krish Lord Krishna is an appearance. Just everything is an incarnation. Is that okay? Yes, yes, Madhari. Yes, Madhari. So here, what they are talking about in the purport. So I'll just summarize the purport because it's slightly long uh, purport. And uh, so they, are, uh, they start with the praise of the Lord. We have seen that one is the praise of the Lord and what they are seeking, what benediction are they seeking from the Lord. These two aspects of a prayer are covered in this particular verse. So how are they praising the Lord? They are saying that you are our father, you are the strength 
and you are personified three worlds you you only exist as the three worlds you are the all pervading and you are the strength of all the creation and um, and then they talk about the different incarnations of vamana narasimha dev rama krishna and that why they are uh, uh, talking about these incarnations they are reminding the lord that whenever there is a dushta shikshana required then lord has incarnated uh to protect the righteous and to punish the demons so therefore what they are going to ask is to also incarnate and protect them but before that they are glorifying these aspects of the lord so uh, nothing is separate from lord and everything is under control what uh, prabha says is that uh, in the purport he is saying that it's not like lord has created only uh, the good in the world lord is the creator of everything everything is under his control including the demons and including anything which is bad in this world like hellish planets are also created by lord and whatever sufferings are uh, there whatever we see anything bad that is happening that is also created by the lord so he controls everything and he takes the different forms and so therefore the reminder is about the different forms matlab you have taken the form of animal you have taken the form of a fish so basically they are saying you come in any form like you can just come and you just protect us in some form or the other you come it's okay so the prayer seeks the lord's appearance to kill this uh, demon rudrasura and they are asking him to immediately uh, uh, appear and incarnate and kill him so in the purport also uh, prabhupad is talking about uh, the different types of devotees sakama devotees akama devotees because here we wondered that they are asking for a benediction right they are asking for some um, uh, protection but that is also a material uh, benediction only that they are seeking some material profit they are seeking because um, but even even if they are seeking that they are ultimately going to the supreme lord so there is no harm but in such cases what the supreme lord does is that um uh in such cases he still uh, comes he does not reject anybody who is coming to him for any kind of uh, benediction he he does not really reject them he tries to fulfill that particular um, uh, benediction in some form or the other so sakama devotees here is mentioned by prabhupad as those people who are desiring material opulence and which is often demigods so who are demigods they are also living entities only but they are living entities who have done lots of pious deeds uh, in their past lives and have got gotten those credits through which they can uh, go to a higher planetary system and but who have who pray to the lord whenever they are in trouble those are the sakama devotees so they still pray to the lord but they pray when they are in trouble and but primarily the reason why they have become demigods is because of their pious activities and who are akama devotees are the pure devotees who seek nothing material and uh, so the difference between sakama and akama devotees is that sakama devotees still go for protection whenever they need protection but akama devotees are those devotees who even accept suffering as a result of past deeds and they never tr trouble the lord for anything they don't ask the lord for any relief or anything and how do they do that so the lord obviously is a eternal protector of all his devotees but um, sakama devotees they receive their desired outcome but they do not they may not a be able to achieve any immediate liberation but akama devotees what happens is that because of their steadfast uh, service they become eligible to return to godhead and there is one very key element there is like um the key element is that they are they are not asking for any benediction they are not expecting anything in return from the supreme lord that's why our uh, prabhupad has actually mentioned this particular verse which is very very critical and uh, which uh, also comes in nectar of devotion uh, these uh, descriptions come when uh, there is a very very elaborate and uh, long discussion about how devotees accept suffering so when somebody wants to make sense of why devotees are suffering and there are such questions which come when they have um, accepted devotional service ideally they are supposed to be happy all their past sins must be Uh, eradicated, and if his sins are eradicated, then how do they uh, accept suffering? These kind of questions come. 
which are basically dealt in nectar of devotion. So there, this verse is very, very often quoted. Godhead without a doubt. Sakama devotees, of course, achieve from the Lord. Uh, am I am I audible? Because it says my internet is uh, unstable. Please let me know whenever you lose me. Yeah. So Sakama devotees, of course, achieve from the Lord the results they desire from their prayers, but they do not immediately become fit to return to Him. So this is the difference between the Sakama devotees and Akama devotees. The main thing is that. What is the intention with which you are praying? That is the main intention. And this is not mentioned. There is no Sakama Akama mentioned in the translation. But why is Prabhupada clarifying that? He is basically differentiating here between the uh, uh, demigods and the pure devotees and how they approach the Lord. And in Bhagavad Gita also, uh, Lord has mentioned, right, there are uh, different types of devotees. Um, arthi, Arthati, Agyanis, and uh, like that, Jigyasu. So th uh, that is also a part of this. Yes. Somebody to read the next translation, text 41. Yeah. Translation and purport by Shila Prabhupada Ki Jai. O Supreme Protector, O Grandfather, O Supreme Pure, O Lord. We are all surrendered souls at your lotus feet. Indeed, our minds are bound to your lotus feet in meditation by chains of love. Now, please manifest your incarnation, accepting us as your own eternal servants and devotees. Be pleased with us and sympathetic towards us. By your love-filled glance with its cool and pleasing smile of sympathy and by the sweet nectarian words emanating from your beautiful face, free us from the anxiety caused by this Vritrasura. Uh, who always paints the cores of our heart. So here, Lord Brahma is considered the father of the demigods, but Krishna or Lord Vishnu is the father of Brahma because Brahma took birth from the lotus flower growing from the Lord's, uh, Lord's abdomen. So the translation basically talks about just a glorification, but there is a word which is used, O oh, Grandfather. So Prabhupada is basically clarifying why they are calling the Supreme Lord as Grandfather because obviously... Uh, Brahma is considered the father of all the uh, all the devatas, and uh, Brahma himself appeared from uh, appeared from the lotus, uh, took birth from the lotus flower, which is growing from Lord Sakdaman. That's the reason why he is called the grandfather. Yes. Text forty two. Anybody? Mm -hmm. Hare Krishna Mata. Yes, sir. Translation, O oh Lord, as the small sparks of a fire cannot possibly perform the action of the whole fire, we sparks of your Lord Lordship cannot inform you of the necessities of your lives. You are the complete whole. Therefore, what do we need to inform you? You know everything because you are the original cause of the cosmic manifestation. The maintainer and the inhaler of the entire universal creation. You always engage in your pastime with your spiritual and material energies. For you are the controller of all these varied energies. You exist within all living entities, within the cosmic manifestation and also beyond them. You exist internally as Paramatma, Parabrahman, par, par and externally as the ingredient of the material creation. Therefore, although manifested in various stages at different times and places and in various bodies, you, you, the personality of Godhead, are the original cause of all causes. Indeed, you are the original element. You are the witness of all activities. But because you are as great as the sky, you are never touched by any of them. You are the witness of everything as Par Brahman and Paramatma, who supreme personality of Godhead, nothing is unknown to you. Hare Krishna Mataji. 
Yes, Prabhuji. So here, basically, it is uh, uh, it is that aspect of the Lord being the witness as the super soul, and uh, He knows everything, whatever is within and without, outside and inside. Everything is known to the Supreme Lord. So uh, that is what uh, uh, what what are demigods doing here? Basically, they are. Um, expressing their inability to solve their problems. Like, um, as the small sparks of a fire cannot possibly perform the actions of the whole fire, we sparks of your lordship cannot inform you of the necessities of our lives. What they are saying is that everything we can't like tell you, but since you are sitting as a super soul, you are the witness to everything, therefore you know everything. So here, uh, what uh, Prabhupada has done is that in the purport, he is uh, he is basically elaborated on that aspect about the Brahman, Paramatma, and Bhagwan. How the Lord is actually sitting as a super soul, and why are they talking about this? Like, suppose somebody just opens this particular verse; they have not gone through the Bhagavatam or anything, they do not know anything, uh, and open this verse. So, what Prabhupada's intention is that whenever there is anything which is there uh, in the translation. He will elaborate on those aspects where a newcomer, if coming, should not get a doubt. So that's the reason why he, you will see that many times he has explained the same Brahman, Paramatma, Bhagavan, Paramatma. So uh, this particular thing he has quoted many times in many verses. And why does he do it repetitively? There are two reasons. One is obviously for the reader also who is reading everything. This is kind of getting ingrained into our subconscious mind continuously uh, by uh, repetitive because sometimes just by hearing we don't accept because we have kilometers and kilometers of layers of uh, anarthas which are covering our heart and uh, they uh, uh, unless and until everything is purified we won't um, uh, really reflect the true nature of a soul and we won't accept everything on its face value and the uh, word uh, as as absolute. That is the reason why Prabhupada repeats these things many, many times so that because by repetitive hearing and reading, sometime at least we will be able to believe it. That yes, that is what it is. And he's sitting inside our heart and we make our actions very conscious because of that. So in this purport also, uh, Prabhupada has covered like that. What he is talking about in this particular verse is uh, is basically that first is that they are acknowledging the Lord's omniscience. Omniscience means that he can see everything, he is present everywhere, uh, he knows everything. That is what omniscient means. And uh, why is he omni omniscient? Because he is the complete whole. Purnamada Purnamidam. Right? So he is the complete whole. We have all emanated out of him. And therefore, uh, uh, and we are those sparks which have emanated out of the complete whole, which is the which is the larger fire, which is the supreme lord. And uh, so we um, uh, we cannot um, inform him of every of our need, but by uh, being present within us as the super soul, Lord knows everything. Uh, so here uh, the aspect is about acknowledging that yes you are omniscient we accept that you you know everything the second aspect that is being described is how they are understanding lord's nature so they are uh, they are saying lord engages in spiritual and material pastimes that's what Prabhupada is describing in the purport and he controls all the energies so spiritual energy uh, uh, which is the internal potency and also uh, the marginal potency where we exist and also the external energy, the material energy is also controlled by the Supreme Lord only. We are all his energies. He exists within and beyond all things as Parabrahman, the Supreme Spirit and Paramatma as the Super Soul. So Parabrahman is the Supreme Spirit is the Brahman Aphrodite, which is all pervading. And Paramatma as the Super Soul, which is sitting within every living entity. So that is what they are talking about. The absolute truth and uh, devotion. So ultimately what uh, Prabhupada is talking about in the verse is that the Lord is the original cause of all causes and he is witness to all the activities but he is untouched by them. He does not 
he is not affected by any of the material energy though he is creator of the material energy he he is the original cause of the material energy but he does not get affected by the material energy so none of this sattva rajas tamas or any of the material uh, conditions do not impact him at all and the pure devotees are the only ones who can understand the lord and by, and why they understand the because we know that pure devotees uh, they do not ask for any benediction so they don't have to tell that you are you know everything within me because they already know they do not seek any material benefit in their prayers and uh, but they are actually always serving him selflessly that is what uh, pure devotees do we'll go a little quicker from here because i'm almost almost done with the time yeah translation and prophet dear uh, by shila prabhat ki jai dear lord you are omniscient and therefore you know very well why we have taken shelter at your lotus feet which provide shade that gives relief from all material disturbances since you are the supreme spiritual master and you know everything we have sought shelter of your lotus feet for instructions please give us relief by counteracting our present distress your lotus feet are the only shelter for a fully surrendered devotee and are the only means for subduing all the tribulations of this material world so now they are basically taking the surrender and shelter so here they are what proper is they are almost becoming pure devotees because they are surrendering to the supreme lord so that is the only shelter even for a conditioned soul should be the lotus feet of that is the only shelter text 44 therefore o lord o supreme controller o lord krishna please annihilate this dangerous dangerous demon vitra vitrasura vashta's son who has already swallowed all our weapons our paraphernalia for fighting and our strength and influence yeah so here uh, prapad is basically uh, clarifying that part that there are different types of uh, 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 there are different types of um, uh, devotees who approach him uh, from bhagavad gita he is talking about this namam dushkriti no modha prapatyante na radhama so there are four different types so we have already already covered that in uh, bhagavad gita the distressed desirer of wealth inquisitive and he who is searching for knowledge so uh by prapad is clarifying is because now finally they have put their uh, their request to annihilate this dangerous demon ritrasura so why they want that to be eliminated so that they can still continue to be protected and they can continue to enjoy their uh, 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 their uh, position in the uh, heavenly kingdom so they are not uh, worried about it now whenever this thing happens uh prapad also again keeps bringing the comparison between those people who are seeking material desires and who, to, who those who are pure devotees the difference between pure devotees is that here bhakti vinod thakur's uh, example is given mara bhi rakha bhi yo ichha tohar so what he is saying is that a pure devotee does not even ask for protection and fully surrendered unto the lotus feet now as you desire you may protect me or annihilate me you have the full right to do either so that is a pure devotee who is actually asking for nothing and uh, who is saying that even if you annihilate me i'm fine there must be some plan in it even if you destroy me it's fine that is your plan so they accept lord's plan as his will and they follow the plan they have no questions or qualms about it whereas uh, when you have uh, uh, some tinges of uh, mishra bhakti automatically what happens is that you seek protection and you ask for uh, uh, this one of course here uh, the same thing is saying like how we ask for prayers uh, if you so desire has been added by the demigods if you so desire please protect us from ritra ritrasura but uh, prabhupad is basically clarifying the difference between the types of uh, people who approach the lord for material benedictions and and then the pure devotees oh lord oh supreme pure you live within the core of everyone's heart and observe all the desires and activities of the conditioned souls 
O Supreme Personality of Godhead, known as Lord Krishna, your reputation is bright and illuminating. You have no beginning, for you are the beginning of everything. This is understood by pure devotees because you are easily accessible to the pure and truthful. When the conditioned souls are liberated and sheltered at your lotus feet, after roving throughout the material world for many millions of years, they attain the highest success of life. Therefore, O Lord, O Supreme Personality of Godhead, we offer our respectful obeisances at your lotus feet. Yeah, so th this is again uh, a kind of conclusion of their prayers where they're talking about that how uh, uh, the Supreme Lord uh, can now, they're completely surrendering to the Supreme Lord for whatever is their requirement. And uh, so what they are saying is that they, they are basically glorifying the Supreme Lord of his purity, that uh, of his fame, and uh, how he how easily approachable and uh, pure and truthful is the Supreme Lord and uh, that he awards uh, liberation. And when souls are liberated and take shelter at uh, his feet, uh, those who have been wandering in this material uh, world for millions of years can achieve that highest success once they have surrendered unto him. So they are talking about what is the what, uh, what is the end goal is basically the supreme shelter, surrender to the supreme lord's lotus feet. So therefore, finally, they um, they uh, offer the respectful obeisances. In purport, what Prabhupada is also talking about is that demigods here are basically seeking relief. And the Although they are seeking Lord Vishnu's help, they are now directly approaching the Lord Krishna. Even though Krishna and Vishnu are non-different. Krishna appears on earth to protect his devotees and punish the miscreants. So that's why Krishna's supremacy is what Prabhupada is basically highlighting, that Krishna is the original cause of everything, even about Vishnu and Narayana. So this is this verse is actually clarifying that. And uh, a devotee who has given up everything for Krishna and relies solely on him is called Akinchana. So again, Prabhupada is again using this opportunity to... Uh, to Clarify that how a pure devotee is basically an Akinchana devotee who does not desire anything. We should also remember that uh, and uh, that such devotees are actually very rare, right? The Akinchana devotees are very very rare. So if we if we um, uh, remember the uh, seven dot nineteen in Bhagavad Gita. It says that Bahunam Janma Namante Gyanavan Mam Prapatyate Vasudeva Sarvamiti Samahatma Sudurlabha. So that such a pure devotee is very, very rare. It's very difficult to find one in a million. You will be able to find a pure devotee who is uh, who knows the, uh, the Supreme Lord as he is. Right? And who knows the Supreme Lord to be the cause of all causes. But therefore, that does not mean that because that is so rare that we don't approach the Supreme Lord for anything that we need. It's absolutely fine to approach him instead of approaching any other uh, entity or demigods for our different desires. It's still better that we approach the Supreme Lord only. That's what Prabhupada is basically talking about. And then we also have seen in uh, Bhagavad Gita 11.54, that uh, uh, where, where Krishna is talking about that un only by undivided devotional service can I be understood as I am standing before you and can thus be seen directly. Only in this way can you enter into the mysteries of my understanding. So not everybody can understand the Supreme Lord. Undivided uh, devotional service is needed. So this also supports that point earlier that not everybody, not even demigods or even Maharishis, sages, Siddhis, not everybody can understand the Supreme Lord. Only when we go with, um, with undivided uh, devotional service. So we have uh, always talked about uh, that, right? Uninterrupted, unmotivated devotional service. So only when one renders that kind of service is 
then he is able to see the Lord as he is. Not everybody can do that. So this um, basically purport covers uh, primarily that that um, if the one who is uh, the one who knows the Lord as he is uh, achieves that kind of liberation where they can engage in different rasas with the Supreme Lord like the Santa Rasa, Dasya Rasa, Sakya Rasa, Vatsalya Rasa. So, and all these rasas are also emanations of the Supreme Lord Krishna. So, yeah, so that's what he is uh, talking about. Shri Shukdev Goswami continued, O King Parikshit, when the demigods offered the Lord their sincere prayers, in this way the Lord listened by his causeless mercy. Being pleased, he then replied to the demigods. So then the prayers are done and so is the maximum part of the explanation and here starts the small storyline which can be covered quickly. And uh, so and so here it is saying by his causeless mercy, being pleased, he then replied. So he is still pleased even with these prayers where they are still asking for benediction that also pleases the Supreme Lord because all the elements of the prayers are covered in, in these prayers. So what are the different elements of prayers? One is obviously glorification. Second is accepting our uh, uh, inferior position and uh, our inability to do things for ourselves. So in prayers, usually you will see different prayers which are covered in Bhagavata. These are the four common elements which are there. Uh, glorification, our acceptance of uh, the position. And the third is asking for uh, protection and finally the benedictions and then obeisances. So these are the normal uh, elements and all these elements have been covered by the demigods now in their prayers. So now we see that how the storyline proceeds. What does Supreme Personality of Godhead say? Oh beloved demigods, you have offered your prayers to me with great knowledge and I am certainly most pleased with you. A person is liberated by such knowledge and thus he remembers my exalted position which is about the conditions of material life. Such a devotee is fully purified by offering prayers in full knowledge. This is the source of devotional service to me. So he's talking. Now it is like, why, why uh, offering such prayers is so important to the, so the devotional service, the source of devotional service is the first faith and the prayers are the, are the source. That's what Bhakti means Shravanam Kirtanam Vishnus. Vishnus Maranam uh, uh, and the nine elements basically, chanting and hearing about Lord Vishnu. So impersonalists cannot be purified for they do not offer personal prayers to the Supreme Personality of God. So the thing that somebody is offering the prayers itself is the start of the purification or is the process of the purification. For one who is not even offering prayers, there is no hope anyway. They are impersonalists. Oh, best of the intelligent demigods, although it is true that nothing is difficult for one to obtain when I am pleased with him, a pure devotee whose mind is exclusively fixed upon me does not ask me for anything but the opportunity to engage in devotional service. So he is also telling them that, that okay, uh, uh, oh, best of the intelligent demigods. So although it is true that nothing is difficult for one to obtain when I am pleased with him, Pure devotee. So he's talking about the pure devotee who will not ask for anything but only engage in devotional service. So it's a, like a contradiction. Lord wanted the demigod. See, so this is what is the difference that we have seen. Lord has the power to award every benediction that we ask for. It, it is not that. But usually what Lord does is that he does not award the benediction, but he awards an intelligence through which we can pray to the Supreme Lord. That's what Prabhupada is talking about in this particular purpose, that he awards us the intelligence through which we can pray for more and more devotional service and engage in more devotional service. Instead of trying to solve our the small um, uh, menial uh, problems, which may at that time appear very big. You go a little forward in time and you look back, you will see that those problems were actually very trivial and not as big as they appeared to be at that moment. So that's the reason why Lord awards us the intelligence and the power to tolerate automatically. So Lord regretted that the demigods did not ask for pure devotional service. So this is what it is indicating because he specifically mentions it. He words them for him. 
So those who think material assets to be everything or to be the ultimate goal of life are called misers. I think he is chastising him them also. Mm -hmm. They do not know the ultimate necessity of the soul. Moreover, if one awards that which is desired by such fools, he must also be considered foolish. So he's saying that those who award, like you have asked a foolish request. If I award the foolish request, I am also foolish. That's what he's talking about. So two classes of men, Kripanas and Brahmana. Brahmana is one who knows Brahman, absolute truth, and who thus knows his real interest. Real interest is the interest of the soul. That the soul, what is the soul? Soul's nature itself is indestructible. So now even if Ritrasura is destroying them, if they know that their soul is indestructible, they will not be worried. Right? So, but that is what a Kripana is, a miser who does not know that what is the real treasure that is sitting within them, an indestru indestructible treasure. But one who has material bodily concept of life will automatically ask for those. A Kripna is attracted by things created by the material modes of nature. And their position, their presence, everything is created by material modes of nature only because they still exist within the material universe, though in a higher planetary system. That is what Prabhupada is talking about. Hare Krishna. Yes, Prabhupada. Uh, sorry to interrupt you, Mataji. Mataji, Okasari, uh, Maroksara, uh, explain just what is that uh, intelligence, the uh, previous uh, just uh, yeah. Chepero, intelligence is, yeah. So, Yabarete, if we say Okanishi, in verse 49. So, Ikade Emant Narante, Mamulga, Manaki, uh, those if if we are asking for protection ante manni hmm. somebody is coming to destroy us yes yes can we accepting that i am hmm. ex, i am this body and i need protection right hmm. so hmm. automatically you are relating to your material assets like here oh. demigods what are they asking for protection that vritrasura will destroy them yes hmm. so what is vritrasura destroying the demigods, uh, whether it is their body or whether it is their assets, if he takes over their assets, they will uh, usually what are demigods usually afraid of? Or they're afraid mm -hmm. of losing their position and their assets. That somebody, yeah. some demon is attacking them. But which also means that they are in that, uh, that consciousness is also talking about that. So what is, why is Lord calling them a Kripana, a miser? Because actually there is, what does a miser do? He hides the treasure and uh, and uh, behaves like a pauper. Right? The All the treasure oh. is sitting inside their treasure chest. chest mm. But they will uh, act as if they don't have any wealth only. That is a mm. miser who is always hiding the treasure. What is the real treasure that we have? It is the soul which is sitting within us, which is not uh, not destroyable, right? In yes, yes. chapter 2 of Bhagavad Gita, what is, uh, why, why does Krishna first talk about the nature of the soul? That it cannot be uh, destroyed, uh -huh. it cannot be cut by a sword, it cannot yes. be burnt by fire, it is yes. indestroyable, it is eternal. So what are people afraid of then? Why are you afraid of this temporarily positions and uh, the things that you have? So that mm. is the nature of somebody who is attached to their material assets. And that so is our time right. apadu, our our intelligence is uh, our intelligence doesn't work, Mataji. Or how, how like you, yes, you obviously it is work. not working. It is not yes. working if we are attached. But what when we go to Supreme Lord, usually for benedictions, what Supreme mm -hmm. Lord does is that uh, instead of the full, fulfilling, you please ah, okay. Benediction. So he, he will give the knowledge to uh, understand the uh, situation and uh, leave the gives, whatever gives, the attachment. Yes, he gives <laughs> the intelligence. What is that intelligence? Is the intelligence to understand our soul, the super, super soul, the relation between the soul and the uh, soul and the super soul. Super soul. If you go to any of the demigods, they award you what you asked for. What is the difference between the demigods and the supreme lord? The uh, supreme lord gives the intelligence. Got it, Mataji. Right. So yes. here. That's why uh, in the even in this uh, purport, look here. So as stated by Lord in the Chaitanya Charitamrita, 
आमी विज्ञायी मूर्खे विषया के ना दीबा स्वचरणा मृता दिया विषया धुलाई बा Since I'm very intelligent, why should I give this fool material prosperity? Instead, I shall induce him to take the nectar of the shelter of my lotus feet and make him forget illusory material enjoyment. That is the intelligence. Hmm. If one sincerely prays to God for material possessions in exchange for devotional service, the Lord, who is not foolish like such an intelligent, unintelligent devotee, shows him special favor by taking away whatever material possessions he has. అంటే ఇఫ్ సంబడి ఈస్ ఆస్కింగ్ ఇన్ ఎక్స్చేంజ్ ఆఫ్ డివోషనల్ సర్వీస్ అంటే భక్తి చేయట్లేదు బట్ యాక్చువల్లీ ఈస్ ఆస్కింగ్ ఫర్ మెటీరియల్ పొజిషన్స్ అప్పుడు ఏం చేస్తాడు దట్ దోస్ ఆర్ ద పీపుల్ ఫ్రమ్ వే ఫ్రమ్ హూమ్ లార్డ్ విల్ టేక్ అవే ద మెటీరియల్ పొజిషన్స్ హీ హ్యాస్ అండ్ గ్రాడ్యువలీ గివ్స్ దెమ్ ద ఇంటెలిజెన్స్ టు బి సాటిస్ఫైడ్ ఓన్లీ బై రెండరింగ్ ద సర్వీస్ టు హిస్ లోటస్ ఫీట్ దట్స్ వాట్ శ్రీ కృష్ణ చక్రవర్తి ఠాకూర్ కామెంట్స్ అ ఫుల్ రిక్వెస్ట్ హిస్ మదర్ టు గివ్ హిమ్ పాయిజన్ If the mother being intelligent will certainly not give him poison, even though he requests it. So, hmm. this is like, if anything asking for material protection, material prosperity, retention of material prosperity, everything is like a poison only because that is keeping you entangled in this material world. Hmm. When will you leave that detachment? When will you start looking for the Lord if you are continuously wanting to enjoy in this material world? Because by giving you prosperity, what will happen? You will have a tendency to enjoy it. and stay mm-hmm. here only comfortably ikkade untan nenu ikkade kelladu when will you get that uh, thought that no enough of this nak chaal inka ikkade odde odde naaku i want to go back when will you have that so for that lord gives intelligence either he takes away the material possessions or he takes away the attachment for material possessions so you may have we have seen many people who are very very opulent like uh, like uh, ford right mm mm-hmm. mm he has opulence it's not like he does not he, he is not uh, akinchana that way but he still mm. has attachment to the stream lord's lotus feet right he is a devotee yes, like that so it's not necessary it's not about whether one is opulent or not rich or not whether you are attached to that wealth or not is very very important how attached are you tomorrow Arik. if that wealth is taken away from you will your reaction be the same probably not mm. that that part right thank you thank you mata ji thank you hare krishna i hope i don't know whether i am capable of answering no no mata ji yeah. yeah i, I, I really i it comes I, to my mind so with this example i i could uh, connect what what exactly the the context yeah. thank yeah, you mata not it's not that lord is like uh, uh, taking a revenge on everybody who asks for benediction and start taking away the rat <laughs> it's not like that yeah. but many people I, think that but it's mainly about attachment Yeah. Yes, Mataji. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Hare Krishna. A pure devotee who is fully accomplished in the science of devotional service will never instruct a foolish person to engage in fruitive activities for material enjoyment, not to speak of helping him in such activities. Such a devotee is like an experienced physician who never encourages a patient to eat food injurious to his health, even if the patient desires it. So what is Lord doing now? he is not talking about what uh, what uh, the demigods um, uh, asked about vritrasura and anything first he is giving the intelligence who is a pure devotee what are their qualities that's what he is talking about here ultimate goal of life is called my misers why it is miserly realize your real treasure now he is talking about who is the intelligent uh, is one who is fully accomplished in science of devotional service and uh, will never instruct a foolish person to engage in fruitive activities for material enjoyment so like that he is explaining that what is uh, uh, what are they asking for even and uh, who never encourages a patient who is the expert doctor if i am asking i am a diabetic and i am asking i want to eat sweet every day will my doctor allow me if he is really an expert if he really wishes me well he will never uh he will ev- never allow that that food which is injurious to me he will not give it to me he will ask me to refrain from it that's what lord is actually trying to give a message by giving different different examples and that's what prabhupada is basically uh, a kind of uh, building upon that only whenever uh, such th- uh, uh, such things come he gives different references from bhagavad gita of uh, people who are in uh, different mishra bhaktis 
what it is like those whose minds are distorted by material desires surrender unto demigods and follow the particular rules and regulations of it. so who are the ones who uh, surrender to demigod who are the ones who surrender to the supreme lord right instructs a devotee who constantly engages in his service how to approach him at the end of so this is the intelligent intelligence which the lord is actually giving that how he can be approached how can people actually uh, approach him that is the intelligence that ultimately he gives i will give that intelligence so since uh, lord is talking about i will give the intelligence Prabhupada is building up on that where at all he has mentioned these in the Bhagavad Gita that he will give the intelligence. Our references he is basically um, Prabhupada provides in the purpose to support what God is saying in the uh, in the verse. So now it is basically from here on it is a short uh, story uh, line only. Oh Maghavan Indra, all good fortune unto you. I advise you to approach the exalted saint, the Dhyancha, the Dichi. He has become very accomplished in knowledge, vows and austerities, and his body is very strong. Go ask him for his body without delay. So what, is, what are they saying? Actually, he's asking him what is the next solution uh, to his problem. So he's saying that I'm not going to incarnate, but you please approach Dadichi. Why he's asked uh, Indra to approach Dadichi only? Because there was a backstory where earlier... Uh, the uh, Indra had actually insulted uh, the Dichi in the past. Lord Vishnu advised him in the past. So that uh, huh, there is a story to it. That saintly Dadiyansha, who is also known as Dadichi, personally assimilated the spiritual science and then delivered it to the Ashwini Kumaras. It is said that. The Dhyansha gave them mantras through the head of a horse. Therefore, the mantras are called Ashwashira. After obtaining the mantras of spiritual science from Dadiji, Ashwini Kumaras became Jeevan Mukta, liberated even in this life. So basically, Prabhupada is uh, supporting uh, the purport with the actual storyline. So originally what had happened was that this uh, Dadiji had perfect knowledge uh, how to perform different fruitive activities. And so Ashwini Kumaras had approached him and uh, they asked, asked him to give them the spiritual knowledge. But Indra was not happy about it. Indra didn't want. Because if they get the knowledge, they will get liberated and they will go away. Ashwini Kumaras is basically a position. It's not a person, but it's basically a position. So the one who were existing at that time, uh, he uh, Indra didn't want them to leave. So therefore, he was not. He was upset about Dadichi giving them uh, this one and he threatens Dadichi that uh, if you give them the knowledge then I will cut off your head so what Ashwini Kumaras basically are expert uh, surgeons uh, they are expert in uh, surgery and uh, health so what they tell uh, Marichi is that uh, what you do is that we will cut your head we will put a horse's head on your head and then you give us the knowledge through the horse's head after that, since we are any, uh, after that, what will happen? Indra will come and cut your horse's head, and then we will sew back your uh, original head, and then you will have your normal uh, body as the Diji. So and therefore, um, uh, uh, so they they do that. They uh, continue that, and uh, this is the plan, and uh, uh, that's why Indra and uh, uh, the Diji have a certain kind of tension between each other. And Dadichi imparts the Brahma Vidya through the mouth of a horse. This Brahma Vidya is also known as Ashwashira because he is imparted it in uh, the head of Ashwa, which is a horse. So Dadiyancha's invisible, invincible protective covering known as the Narayana Kavacha. And he also has a Narayana Kavacha. And also there is a different explanation of, uh, of Narayana Kavacha in the previous chapter, if you remember. That how, uh, what are, what are the different things to be done if one wants to get a uh, Narayana Kavacha, uh, the different austerities to be performed, how to pray, how to worship and everything is covered in the previous chapter, in the eighth chapter. So that Narayana Kavacha is uh, covering this uh, Dadichi Maharshi. And that was given to Twashta who delivered it to his son Vishwarupa from whom you have received it. Uh, because of this Narayana Kavcha, Dadichi's body is now very strong. You should therefore beg him for his body. 
So when the Ashwini Kumaras beg for Dadyanja's body on your behalf, he will surely give it because of affection. So he's telling them the route, how you can get the thing done. So basically what he says is that Dadichi's body has to be created as a weapon which can kill Putrasura. For that, obviously, he has to give up his body. Now, here is the difference between Indra and Dadichi. Indra does not want to give up his body or his opulence or anything. He is seeking for protection. And he has a tension with Dadichi. But now what he has to, he has to take that embarrassment, go and ask Dadichi to kill himself and give him that body so that he can kill Vritrasura uh, with all that. So it is such an embarrassing situation for Indra, but still he does that because uh, he wants to retain uh, whatever he has. And now is the test for Dadichi whether he will really give it or not. Because this is the order of the Lord. So obviously, whether Dadichi will follow is no, follow or not. And whoever follows automatically proves that it is pure devotee. He is not afraid of any annihilation or destruction. So that's what this uh, storyline gives us a uh, gives us a sweet message like that. When the Ashwini Kumaras beg for Dadyanja's body on your behalf, he will surely give it because of affection. Why? Affection with because of the interaction they had with Ashwini Kumaras. Do not doubt this, for Dadyanja is very experienced in religious understanding. When the Dhyanja awards you his body, Vishwakarma will prepare a thunderbolt from his bones. This thunderbolt will certainly kill Vritrasura because it will be invested with my power. When Vritrasura is killed because of my spiritual strength, you will regain your strength, weapons and wealth. Thus, there will be all good fortune for all of you. Although Vritrasura can destroy all the three worlds, do not fear that he will harm you. He is also a devotee and will never be envious of you. Again, Lord is giving uh, another lesson that he is giving uh, apparent messages also and hidden messages also that pure devotees are never envious. Even though you go and kill Vritrasra, he will never avenge you. That's what uh, he's talking about. And because he is a pure devotee, that is not his nature. To be envious is not his nature. So devotee of the Lord is never envious of anyone. What to speak of other devotees? So that is the nature. Like if a discriminating factor between between one uh, person and another, uh, especially even in uh, um, even in um, association, is that that non enviousness is what we need to build. Non enviousness of anything about another devotee, be it of their position, of their skills or talents, or even of their uh, bhakti, if we think that, okay, that other person is performing so well and I am not able to, that also is a form of envy. Uh, and every time we feel envious, probably what we can just do is that just turn it into glorification. When a tinge of enviousness comes, immediately start. That's what I heard in uh, some previous lectures of uh, some sannyasi maharajas. That when you feel envious of anybody, immediately you have to turn it into glorification. Like, you are so wonderful, you are so glorious, you are performing your uh, devotional service so well, or you are do doing your deity worship so well, please teach us. And that is what we can ask for. And that is how we can actually um, have a wonderful association of um, different devotees where one is glorifying the other constantly and nobody is envious. So envy is the one which can, which can actually... Uh, create a uh, create a situation of fall down also because some may be apparent or some may be hidden but uh, and uh, it is very very obvious we are in the material world we'll have these tinges very naturally the objective is not that uh, we start identifying who has what kind of envy uh, and how are they envious of us and we be envious of them that is not the, the objective is to accept our situation that we still have so many anarthas, obviously. That's the reason why we are here. And uh, accept our situation and think of how can we get rid of that and how can we get better. And uh, that is what I have heard in many of the lectures before and uh, which I feel very gr grateful to share also that that's how we can actually uh, get rid of, uh, of our envious nature is by glorification of other devotees of everything uh, that they can give us of our teachers and uh, of everything that they can offer to the Lord in, uh, in their in service of uh, the Supreme Lord in their devotional service. So every skill, talent, every uh, everything that we do, 
is ultimately for the service of the Lord. Uh, and no no such uh, skill or no particular thing is small or big in the eyes of the Supreme Lord. Because Supreme Lord is only asking for Patram Pushpam, Falam Toyam. He is asking for the meagerest of things. But even if we can offer anything from ourselves to the Supreme Lord in any form, Lord is happy. And nothing is big or nothing is small. That is what here basically a devotee does not hesitate to give up his own body for a better cause. Therefore, if the body and other positions can be utilized for a better cause, a devotee never hesitates to give up even his own body. Lord Vishnu wanted to save the demigods, even though able to swallow the three worlds. Would uh, So, Vritrasura has that capability. He can swallow the three worlds. He can kill the demigods. But because he is a devotee, for a devotee, there is no difference between living and dying. Because in this life, a devotee engages in devotional service. And after, again, ultimately, whether in the spiritual world or whether in another life, he still engages in devotional service. So, therefore, for devotee, and therefore, he is non-envious and automatically, Vritsrasura will agree to be killed by the demigods. That's what Lord is uh, kind of giving a prophecy and telling them how to actually get, uh, get this done. So thus ends the Bhaktivedanta purpose to the 6th canto, ninth chapter of the Srimad Bhagavatam entitled Appearance of the Demon Vritrasura. Hare Krishna. Sorry, I Hari didn't. Bol, Hari bol, Hari Excellent. I'm so sorry. I didn't realize my video was off because my laptop was heating up. I thought it might get switched off. That's the reason why I off my video. I'm so sorry. I didn't realize that. Yeah. Any questions or clarifications that I can answer, please feel free to ask. Um, I'll try my best. But if I can't answer, I will refer and come back again. And if there are no questions, we will we can conclude the call also. It's already been Hare Krishna. Dandut Pranam Mataji. Hare Krishna Prabhuji. Mataji. Thank you. Thank you. Wonderful class, Mataji. But uh, last uh, last talk a point Chepperu where um, everybody is suffering. Okay. Mm -hmm. Everybody has their own uh, you know situations. Uh, so we, we should not um, you know um uh, we should not uh, think about that. Mm -hmm. So uh, how how to work on that, Mataji? Because uh, first, I mean, uh, nenu nenu the end and Prabhuji, yepudu maniki ye matram kuncham. Even if um, uh, even anupich na, even na man to elagi na behave chase na kuda manam vallalo unna good ni first identify chase, dhani glorify cheyalo. Okay, okay. Forget about what bad uh, experience you have had with anybody or anything. But in that, even in uh, all that qualities, there might be some good quality. No? There must be something nice that they are doing. That That's the reason why they are in uh, devotional service. Yes, but uh, uh, could you just give me an example where where we can, like, like, uh, like we say, like, uh, in, um, if, if you don't, like, non-witch, when I, when I quit the non-witch, there are a lot of other things I have heard. I have uh, I used to see the videos to how to stop eating non -witch. It's okay. not a one one go away because a uh -huh. lot of other things I have to go through it. He uh, and chala uh, chala choose hai no? uh, there I can I can literally think idi idi manu How how we can like take the example and recollect in such a scenario. Mm -hmm. uh, so that easily, uh, like, and uh, general, ga, they, they give an example. Ki so the same example I will use. If somebody knows that you were a non veg eater, instead of criticizing you uh, for being a non veg eater, they can actually look at your efforts, what you are doing, different videos you are seeing, uh, for how you want to get rid of that habit. Right? Because mm -hmm. A1 manam ochin ventane manam purified souls, I form whether it's a process. Yes. It's a Again, uh, it's not just uh, it's not necessary that in this birth itself we will be pu completely purified. Also, it could take okay. us uh, multiple lifetimes, right? Once we have come to bhakti, and we also know that in bhakti, wherever you have left, you will start from the same state in the next life. So hmm. we are not really scared that, but our attempt is that we try as much purification as possible, and that purification will not happen as long as we keep finding faults in others. We have to keep looking at what is ourselves and how we can improve ourselves. 
what hmm. is it that can inspire from so somebody who is like say that who is harsh with their words but hmm. who is great at uh, let's say um, who is great at performing um, uh, events for like or conducting events uh, to get uh, devotees together to perform uh, uh, some deity worship or something there is a possibility like that i don't hmm. know a person or anything like that but i can give an example but i'm just giving a hypothetical situation there is a possibility that somebody has harsh words but has other good qualities is very very hmm. dedicated is uh, uh, rendering different kinds of services is very very committed itla und anukunte manam aa factor ni manam dani meeda focus cheyali like okay how hmm. are they uh, performing their services what is the good in them and glorify that good also because when you are glorifying this meer you are increasing the weight on that side automatically the other weight of the criticism automatically becomes lesser and lesser and at one time it gets um, eradicated from your heart also inka meer ant pattinchukora appudu dan gurinchi okay mata ji that's what i have heard in a lecture of yeah. course it's one thing to practice and one thing of hearing but um, consciously also i try to look at uh, Uh, how i can uh, look at the good sides of everybody but we are hmm. not like uh, we are not in still in that platform that uh, from the first stage we will start looking at good there might be something which will which 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 will affect us but we ha we have to learn to be conscious of that accept it and then start working on it to keep on practice we yes. keep on practice you say makes us perfect that's it okay first is the best to leave the rest मन फस्ट एक्सप्ट अभी मन लोपम अभी अवतल वाल तप चूडमें इट इज अवर इट इज समथिंग इट फॉल्ट फैंडिंग नेचर आफ अवर्स फस्ट वी हेव एक्सप्ट दट वी हेव दट फ्ला फैंडिंग अवट अदर पर्सन फ्ला वी हेव टू एक्सप्ट दट दिस इज अवर फ्ला एक्सप्ट इज द फस्ट स्टेप टू एक्सिक्यूशन इफ यू डोट इवन एक्सप्ट वी आलवेज थिंक अदर पर्सन इज ओनली रांग ऐ एम आलवेज करेक्ट द you will never correct yourself true so acceptance is the first step and kine manamu we have to keep stepping out of our own uh, uh, consciousness and we have to keep observing ourselves okay ani manam chusukovali anamata thank you mata ji hari krishna thank you mata ji thank you any other questions thank you so much for your um, attention and uh, undivided uh, participation in this particular class which is a very very important and wonderful class of uh, demigods prayers to the supreme lord and what the supreme lord uh, actually teaches the demigods also is so wonderful even i learned a lot uh, through this class thank you so much for your participation all glories to shila prabhat and gurudev